Hello, my name is Ali Sekman. I'm a professor of computer science at Tennessee State University. In this video, I'm going to talk about the concept of garbage collection. It's an important concept. For example, in C++, when you create an object, you have to explicitly delete it, otherwise it will stay in the memory, even if after your program exists. So in Java, we have garbage collection that automatically tracks all the objects, keeps tracking all the objects that are created, and when an object is no longer reachable or in use, it will be marked for garbage collection. And then whenever Java, Java Virtual Machine is available, that object will be removed from the memory. All right, let's get started. And this is for COM 3110 Java programming class. The topic is garbage collection. So when you create an object in Java, they will occupy memory space. And garbage collection is a mechanism that can free the memory space for the objects that are no longer in use. Garbage collection does not necessarily happen as soon as an object is no longer in use. It will be marked, but it doesn't mean that the garbage collector will work immediately. And the garbage collector will figure out which objects are not in use and therefore eligible for garbage collection. And it will certainly go to work if there is a danger of running out of memory. At least it will try to work. And it will if JVM is available. New keyword is used to allocate memory space for an object. And garbage collector can reclaim the memory space occupied by the objects that are no longer reachable. Here's our first very brief example. We have a string object, str. Using the new keyword, we allocated memory space for this object, as you see, hello, TSU. Then second line, I say str is null. str does not point here anymore. It points nowhere. At this point, this memory space will be marked for garbage collection. So in other words, when the object is no longer reachable, it is marked for garbage collection and the object is no longer reachable after line four, okay? Here is a, another example. First, we have str. It points a memory space in which we have a low TSU. Then str is equal to another, we create another string. That means we allocate new memory space for another string and str points to that memory space. Doesn't point this memory space anymore. It points another memory space. Do we have anyone who can point to this memory space? Is this reachable? No, then this will be marked for garbage collection. As soon as we are after line four, the garbage collector may be invoked. Then I say str is null. That means str points nowhere. Now the second memory space will be also marked for garbage collection. And the first time garbage collector will be invoked right after may be invoked, right after line four. We have a class car, which doesn't do anything. And first I create a car object, car one points somewhere in the memory in which I have a car object. And then I say car, car two is equal to car one. I assign car one to car two. So I create car two reference and car two is equal to car one. That means car two also points the same memory space as what? Car one. And then I say car one is equal to null. Even though I say car one is equal to null, there is still someone pointing this memory space, therefore it cannot be garbage collected. Then I say car two is null. Now no one points this memory space. It is not reachable. At this point, it will be what? Garbage collected. So right after line six, the garbage collector may be invoked. Okay, here is another example. First, we have car one. Car one is null. As you see here, I did not use the new keyword. Then I say car, one is equal to new card. That means I allocate now new memory space and it points to this memory space. Then I create car two with new car. So car two points another memory space. Now I say car one is equal to car two. That means car one will not point this memory space anymore. It will point the same memory space as car two points to. At this point, no one can reach this memory space. So it will be garbage collected. Right after line six, this, may, this will be mark for garbage collection. And then I say car two is null. So no one, but still this space is reachable. But whenever we say car one is null, it is no longer reachable and it will be marked for garbage collection. Okay. Object final, final, finalization. Well, assume that you created an object 
maybe like file writer or print writer. You created a new object. And the purpose of that new object may be to open a new file. It may be establish a network connection, or it may be connect to a database, okay? So when that object is no longer in use, before you delete it from the memory, you may want to do a final stuff. For example, if that object opened a file, before that object is deleted from the memory, maybe you want to close that file. You want to make sure it is closed. Otherwise, when the object is deleted from the memory, that file still not be, will not be accessible by other objects. Or if you connect to the database, and if you deleted the object that you used to connect to the database, then maybe that database connection will be remain, it will remain open. So finalized method will give you a chance to free up some resources. And finalized method will be automatically called just before the garbage collector cleans the memory space. Since we don't know when the garbage collector will clean the memory space, practically we don't know when the finalized method will be called. But it will be called as soon as the object is deleted from the memory for good. Finalized method is originally defined where? In object class. If you recall, object is the mother of all classes. Even though the name is object, uh, this is a capital O, that's a class. And it had 11 methods. You can refresh your memory if you want to. And one of the methods that it defines is finalize. Let's look at it. Finalize doesn't take any input arguments. It doesn't return anything. It is protected. So if I want to overwrite finalize in my class, I must use either protected keyword, protected access identifier, or less restrictive, which is public. So when you overwrite finalize, it can be either protected or public. You cannot have none or you cannot have private. And finalize throws throwable. If you recall, if you have a method that throws an exception or throws throwable or throws error, okay, if it throws throwable, when you override it, that must either throw throwable or one of it is subclasses or it doesn't have to throw anything, okay? So let's keep this one in mind. We discussed this in exception handling video lecture. Finalized method of the class object performs no special action. It simply returns normal. It doesn't do anything special. Overridden method must be either protected or public because of the reason that I explained. And also overridden method may throw throwable or any of its subclasses or does not need to throw any exception. Okay, so let's keep those in mind. Here is our first example. I have a class test, which is a static data member X, which is initialized to X, to initialized to zero. It has a constructor which increases X by one and it prints constructor, it prints the value of X. And then I have finalized method, which is exactly the same way defined in what? Object class. So I'm overriding that finalized method. Protected void, finalized, throws, throwable. It decreases X by one. So every time I create a new object, I will increase X by one. Every time the object is deleted from the memory, I know that finalized method will be called. Therefore, I will decrease X by one. So X simply will keep track of the number of objects that are created. But what do I know and what do I not know? I know finalize will be called, but do I know when? I don't know when. Whenever Java Virtual Machine comes and reclaim the memory space for that particular object, then it will be called. Okay, a, another thing that you should know, uh, superclass, I mean, if a constructor makes a call to super, a constructor automatically makes a call to superclass constructor, but there is no such a thing for finalize. Uh, and then we will see that with another example. So everything is fine here. Now I create OBJ new test. So I'm gonna go and create an object called OBJ. And I have X zero. X is static, therefore it has nothing to do with objects whenever the test class is loaded, x is equal to zero. Now I'm making a call to what? The constructor. So I'm gonna go here, x plus plus. So x will change to what? One. 
and then we'll print construct that x is equal to x, construct that x is equal to one. Okay, then I create another object, obj2. So I'm gonna go and create another object, obj2. In order to create, I make a call to constructor again. I'll go here, it increased x by one. So x becomes what? Two. And then it will say constructor x is equal to two. Constructor x is equal to two. Then I say obj is null, you see? That means this does not point here anymore. It points nowhere. At this point, this will be marked for what? Garbage collection, okay? That's for sure. And then at this point, it may call the finalized method or it may not call the finalized method. We don't know, why? Because being marked by, as garbage collect, be, being, mar being marked by garbage collector doesn't mean that you're gonna be removed from the memory space immediately. And then when I say obj2 is null, right here, that means obj2 doesn't point here anymore. It points nowhere. Therefore, this space will be also garbage marked for garbage collection. Okay. And what happens here? System.gc encourages Java Virtual Machine to call garbage collector. It does not guarantee, but it encourages. Okay. In this case, assume that the garbage collection, garbage collector comes and reclaims this memory space. In that case, it will make a call to finalize method. And finalize method will decrease x by one. So x will become one and it will print finalize x one. Then, and then assume that this memory space is also reclaimed. Finalize method will be called once more and x will become zero and it will print finalize x, x is equal to zero, okay? So my question to you right now, if I run this program again, is it guaranteed that I will see exactly what I see here? It is not, because I will definitely see the first two, but I don't know if I will see the second and third, I'm sorry, third and fourth, because I will see them only if the garbage collector is invoked and it comes and reclaims the memory space but I don't know when, okay? Maybe it may be even after I exit the program. Okay. So in this case, I did overwrite, I did overwrite it with what? Uh, exactly the same way it was defined in the object class. This time I have exactly the same thing, but I'm overriding with I remove throw, 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 throwable. I can remove it. I can even change this protector to a public if I want to. So everything is the same here. Important, object class finalize method does not perform any special action. Finalize method is called only once, right before the object is deleted from the memory. Finalize method does not necessarily call on the objects according to the order they become no longer in use. For example, in the previous example, uh, if you go to the previous example right here, okay, for example here obj is no longer in use, obj2 is no longer, we don't know if the garbage collector will first claim memory space for obj or obj2, we don't know, I mean maybe finalize via obj2 may be called before finalize on obj, we don't know the order, okay. Finalized method of superclass is not called automatically by a subclass. We know that a subclass constructor automatically calls a superclass constructor, but for finalized, this is not the case. Finalized of a subclass object does not make a call to finalized method of it is superclass object. Okay, here's an interesting example. Let's take a look at this. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. OBJ1 is an object, it will point the memory space in which I will have an integer object. OBJ array is an array, 
it points to a memory space in which how many cells or components we have four index starts from zero one two three and each one will be null as initialization okay so we did this one and we did that one so now we are here obj array 3 obj array 3 is this one is going to point to obj1 therefore here this one is not going to point null anymore it will point right here okay then i'm done with this i say obj1 is null that means this doesn't point here anymore it points null well i'm still i still have someone who can refer to this memory space so it's not going to be garbage collected but then i say so this is fine when i say obj3 array 3 is equal to null that means this doesn't point here anymore it points null and at this point this memory space can be what garbage mark for garbage collection okay so that means garbage collector may be invoked right after step five okay how about let's change the question a little bit let's remove this from here in this case of course you know we have obj1 here and then i have obj array here and and then obj1 is null so that means this space can be garbage collected right after when we say obj1 is null okay okay well immutable classes let's have a discussion of there are two kinds of classes mutable and immutable and and immutable classes every time you make a change a new memory space is allocated and i'll show you an example for example string class is immutable all the wrapper classes byte short character integer long float double and boolean so we have eight primitive data types and we have eight wrapper classes pay attention this is not car this is full character okay so they are all immutable what does it mean i'm going to show you with an example let's look at this i have a string string class is immutable okay first i have s s points to a memory space in which i have high so when i say print s it's going to print high okay then i say s is equal to s plus there that means whatever s was high concatenate there so it's going to be high there but the trick is high there will not be in this memory space a new memory space will be allocated and high there will be there then when i say print it's going to print what happens to this memory space right here garbage collected okay so after this line garbage collector may be invoked because this space will be what garbage collected so again here s is in, s initially points to the memory space in which high is located then s points to another memory space in which high that is located the old memory space is garbage collect very simple all right let's look at this first i have str1 hello right there then I say str2 is equal to str1. That means str2 points the same memory space as what? str1. Then I say str1 there. Well, am I going to go to the memory space where str1 points to and change this hello to there? Unfortunately not, because string class is immutable. It will point to another memory space in which I have there. So when I print str2, it will print what? Hello. Some of you may think that it's going to print there, but it is not okay because string is immutable therefore if you compile and run you're gonna see hello here's another example str new string hello then i say str is equal to high some of you may accept expect that this hello will be replaced with high but no because string is immutable it's going to allocate another memory space and this space will be what marked for garbage collection so right after line four the garbage collector may be invoked and then str is null then this space will also be marked for garbage collection okay all right string buffer string buffer is another class similar to string but that's mutable 
So string buffer is mutable and the situation is a little different here. Now I have str points, the memory space in which I have hello. Then I say str is equal to high. If it was string, it would point to another memory space. But since string buffer is mutable, it will change the original memory space. And the garbage collect, it's not gonna mark anything for garbage collection. Whenever I say str is null, at this point, this memory space will be marked for garbage collection. Pay attention, string buffer class is mutable. So garbage collection will be invoked right after line five, okay? Note, we cannot exactly predict when the garbage collection will happen. We don't know. We can make an explicit call to the garbage collection by calling one of those followings, but it does not guarantee when it will happen. We encourage, but we don't know when. One of them is GC method of system class. Another one is GC method that you call via get runtime method of runtime class or GC method of runtime class. So if calling one of them, will it guarantee that the garbage collection will run? Collective will run? No. It's highly likely it will run, but it's not still guaranteed. Finalize method will always be called before the program exits. This is false. Finalize method will be called right before the object is deleted from the memory. It may happen after the program exits. A program cannot have out of memory error since garbage collector will always guarantee to be run in the possibility of memory link. That's false. It will try to run, but it's not guaranteed. Okay. I have a car, I created car, car is null. So what should XXX be should to, to encourage Java virtual machine to reclaim the memory space allocated for the object car? So I had this one, a car, allocated memory space. Now it doesn't point there, it points null. This is mark for garbage collection. But what can I do? I can say system.exit system.gc sorry this is fine and i don't know this is capital java is case sensitive so this is not the case this is not the case this is not the case okay okay so this is an interesting example and this might be i made this one up uh let's see if you can understand this this is the main method. I'm going to create as a, again, so you can stop the video because you have to spend a little time to understand what I'm asking in this one. I have class sensor, I have class robot, and I have test. I have now creating an object called S. S points to a memory space right here. So I'm going to go from here to where? Right here to this constructor. This constructor is gonna create an object, okay? It's going to create something called robot, okay? Ah, let's do this. It's going to create an object called robot. While it is creating an object of robot class, it makes a call to this constructor and it sends this. This refers to the caller of this constructor. Who's the caller of this constructor? S. So that means this one is equal to this, okay? So while I'm gonna make a call to robot constructor and robot class has a data member called sensor, therefore it will have something called sensor here. And that sensor will be this. That means it's, very interesting, this is equal to S, okay? That means this guy points this memory space right there. All right, so this memory space is accessible and this memory space is accessible at this point. So once I am done with the sensor constructor, once I'm done with the sensor constructor, uh, this connection robot will be gone. That means this will be gone, okay? And then when I say S is null, this will be gone too. So 
No one can access to this memory space. No one can access to what? This memory space. So let's see our, oops, let's see. Let's see our options. What does it say? Both robot and sensor are eligible for garbage collection after line 19. Only robots are eligible after line 19. Only sensor is eligible for, or only object is eligible. So I believe the answer should be, if we go back, uh, after line 19, this memory space is not accessible, definitely. This memory space is not accessible. Uh, even though this points here, so my guess, my initial guess was both of them are not accessible, but now when I think this is here, no one accesses to that, but this is accessible by this, so I'm gonna assume that this is for eligible for garbage collection, but this is not eligible for garbage collection. Because before this is deleted, it makes no sense to delete this one. So let's go back to our options. So only robot is eligible for garbage collection should be the true one. Okay, this one, I made this one up too. I'm going to ask you to do it as an assignment because I don't want to get into this too much. Okay, so just to show you a couple of things here, I have a class car, car class constructor creates 20,000 strings in a for loop, as you see. It creates a string and set it to null. So that means it has 20,000 strings first created, just like this and then it is set to null. And this will be marked for garbage collection. So in this for loop, 20,000 times, I'm gonna create a string and make it eligible for garbage collection, okay? All right, so this is the main method. What does it do? It has something called runtime object, whose type is runtime class. And you don't have to worry too much about this, get runtime method is going to return a runtime object. And the only thing here is that I'm trying to read the amount of memory available to me, okay? So when I say JVM available memory memory, by these two lines, I will be able to get the amount of memory available to me. So it will say JVM available memory is this much, okay? Then I make a call to three memory. That means now I am making a call to garbage collector to clean the memory. And right after that, memory available is this much. Then I create a car object. Well, when I create the car object, I am creating 20,000 objects and I'm setting them available for what? Uh, for garbage collection, right? And I try to free the memory, but we don't know. Even if I say free memory, it doesn't mean that I mean, well, free memory is going to give me the amount of memory space that's available to me, I'm sorry, okay? Available free memory. And now free memory is less than this amount as you see here. And then uh, when I say runtime.gc, now I'm encouraging Java Virtual Machine to make a call to garbage collector or garbage collection. And this time when I look at the amount of free memory, it is, much more than this one, as you see, okay? So garbage collector did work and it cleaned up some memory space for us, okay? My apologies, free memory means something else here. So please stop the video and, you know, take a look uh, and you're gonna fully understand this. So garbage collection uh, is an important concept in Java, but it's extremely simple. All you need to do is, uh, you know, keep track of the objects and whenever a memory space is no longer accessible, it will be marked for garbage collection. It doesn't mean that the garbage collector will come and clean it immediately. And there's a special method called finalize, defined in object class, we override it. And right before the object is deleted from the memory, the finalize method via that object will be called. It may be after your program exits. I hope you understood and I'll see you in the next video.